According to the ship description, the Aegis Sabre was designed as a space superiority fighter for those situations where you need to leave a lighter footprint. Designed to be a rapid responder, the Sabre is more than capable of establishing battlefield dominance for any number of combat scenarios. But how does it actually perform in combat? For this analysis, we'll attempt to answer three questions. One, is the Sabre viable in combat? Two, what missions might the Sabre be chosen for? And three, how would a pilot use a Sabre effectively against opponents? Disclaimer, this analysis utilizes the Ship Performance Analysis Tool, which is linked in the description, along with an explanation video and a readme. If you are interested in more details on the Sabre or other ships, or any of this confuses you, please consider looking at these resources. 1. Is the Sabre viable in combat? Compared to all single-player combat ships, the Sabre overall has pretty middle-of-the-road statistics with some notable exceptions. It doesn't have torpedoes or an EMP or medium-sized components, but it does have more shield generators and power plants than every medium or smaller fighter, and it has slightly above-average guns and a high roll rate. Because its advantages in specific areas make up for the few disadvantages it has, the Sabre is viable in combat. It can survive long enough to carry out whatever its mission is. The caveat is against torpedo-carrying ships like the Eclipse. They have a firepower and range advantage that cannot be overcome with the current game mechanics. But that's a vulnerability of every ship currently, not just the Sabre. 2. What missions might the Sabre be chosen for? The Sabre's role is stealth fighter. We unfortunately don't have an official description of the stealth fighter role or any concrete information on how its gameplay will play out. We have seen CIG repeatedly compare it to medium fighters though, particularly the Hornet, and its size and firepower line up with that role. Fighters are designed to destroy, disrupt, degrade, disable, or distract other ships. Medium fighters are intended to accomplish this by balancing maneuverability with firepower and durability. The Sabre's advertised advantage over other medium fighters, its stealth capabilities, is not yet reflected in the game, and we know little about how those capabilities will be used directly in combat so we have to evaluate the Sabre from a pure, symmetric combat perspective. The Sabre has the ability to compete with other medium fighters in direct combat, but that's largely because most medium fighters are currently lackluster. The deviations are certainly at shield, power, and hull scores. The Sabre has an extra shield generator and an extra power plant to power that shield generator, but slightly less body hull in accordance with CIG's stated intent for the ship. The extra shield generator gives the Sabre 33% higher shields, but the hull difference is 37%. This might seem like an even trade-off, but the shields have the capability to recharge in combat, which makes them much more valuable to overhaul. For this reason, despite CIG's intent, the Sabre is one of the tankier medium fighters. Because of this, the Sabre is, contrary to expectation, better suited for direct close quarters combat missions such as sweeps, escort, or point defense. All things that would not usually necessitate stealth or speed, which are supposed to be at strong points. 3. How would a pilot use a Sabre effectively against opponents? While the Sabre holds its own against medium fighters, when compared to specific premier non-medium fighters, it becomes clear that the Sabre will encounter significant issues accomplishing its mission against certain enemies. For example, the Arrow gains a lot of defensive potential via its racer comparable size, as well as much higher acceleration rotation rates, which more than makes up for the extra shield generator the Sabre has. It also sacrifices some gun capability, but does have more missile capacity. This means that in a high-speed fight, the Sabre is likely to lose. In a turn battle, the Arrow has potential for a significant advantage at close ranges. Even in the push zone, while it is possible for a well-flown Sabre to gain an advantage, the Arrow's excess acceleration at this range makes it unlikely and makes it even less likely that the Sabre will be able to maintain that advantage for long enough to do lasting damage. The Arrow pilot would have to be pretty inexperienced to allow his acceleration to drop enough for the Sabre to come out on top at close range, and any mistake by the Sabre pilot might result in the ships moving into the advantage zone for the Arrow. The best bet for a Sabre is to keep the Arrow at range and win a battle of attrition via its strong shields and slightly better gun firepower. In short, winning this fight will either depend on superior aiming abilities if both pilots use fixed weapons, or the use of auto gimbals against a fixed arrow. An auto gimbal versus auto gimbal fight is likely to go long but does not favor the Sabre. Against a Hornet, most of the stats are a wash. Neither ship has a significant maneuverability advantage and the Sabre has much lower body hull, less firepower, but better shields. The Sabre does have a slight missile advantage and, with its shields, has the potential to beat a Hornet at range. 
In a turn battle, the Saber can potentially conduct pushes into the Hornet and attempt to gain a positional advantage, particularly if the Saber is more proficient with this style of fighting. There's no advantage against the Hornet with this tactic, but the rotation rates are low enough that there is potential to do this, and it might be the Saber's best chance of a success, especially if the Hornet is not using both pitch and yaw to its full potential. Even if the Saber makes a mistake during a push, its higher shield strength gives it a better chance of surviving and recovering. A battle of attrition at range while nose to nose is likely to result in a stalemate or loss for the Saber, particularly if the Hornet is using high alpha weapons that can punch through the Saber's shields. Against a Vanguard, the Saber gains hardly any maneuverability advantage but loses when it comes to firepower, hull, and especially shields. While the Vanguard is a big target, it can withstand most gun attacks that the Saber is capable of delivering for an incredible amount of time. Despite the Saber's three shield generators, the Vanguard shields beat it almost 3 to 1. The Vanguard's high-speed fight beats that of the Saber with a sizably larger complement of missiles and the ability to take hits with its superior durability. In a turn battle, the Saber has almost no maneuverability advantage against the Vanguard, but it should absolutely not attempt to go head-to-head -to -head against the Vanguard in the nose-to-nose -nose zone. The Saber's best chance is, again, conducting pushes into close range and hoping to come out on top with a positional advantage. Unfortunately, these windows of opportunity will likely not be long enough to do lasting damage due to the Vanguard shields. My overall assessment of the Saber is that while it is viable in combat, there is little reason to take it over certain other combat ships for just about any mission. Sure, it has a lot of survivability, but it will struggle going head to head, and since its role is centered around superiority over other ships, survivability alone won't be enough for it to accomplish its missions. The missing factor here is likely stealth capabilities, but we do not currently know when those will actually afford an advantage in combat. Until then, if you are a Saber pilot, Carefully evaluate every combat situation and plan your attacks ahead of time. Also, one more thing. This is our first video in this series, so we'd appreciate any feedback and any suggestions on what ship we should review next. That's all. Safe flying.